Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. We've got a good one on tap today, and there's going to be two quarterbacks ready to get it done on the gridiron. It's Carson Wentz's Eagles going up against Jared Goff's Rams. All right, we appreciate it, Larry. It's our exclusive coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Who said the crowds wouldn't embrace football being back in L.A.? You certainly couldn't tell that by what we saw a few moments ago. These folks are pumped up as their Rams get set to do battle with the Philadelphia Eagles. Greg Zerline, the Rams kicker, approaches, kicks it off, and here we go from Los Angeles. Gets fielded in the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19th.
15-yard line. Shift together here from the D-line. Wentz now on first down. The connection here with Nelson Aguilar. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. On second down, here's Wentz. Dancing to his left. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Aaron Donald able to drop him for a loss of a couple. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Throwing his wins. Oh, he almost had the rare interception. The big fella couldn't hang on, though. Incomplete. And that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. Here is the putter Jones as he gets this one away. And this will be touched by a member of the kicking team inside the 20, and it's at the 17-yard line. Todd Gurley, and they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and it'll be second and very short. Boy, Charles, Todd Gurley finished the year with a bang, and even though they lost the Falcons, he was over 100 yards in that game. Weeks 15 and 16, he was fantastic. A comeback year for him, wasn't it? It certainly was, because we saw him explode on the scene as a rookie in 2015. 2016 just never could really get started. We didn't see the big runs. Heck, we didn't see a 100-yard game out of it. So when you look at this season, brand new offense, new way of doing things, but the biggest thing, offensive line. Andrew Whitworth at left tackle. Roger Saffold be able to settle in at guard his best position. And John Sullivan, the new center. That gave him a line to work with, and boy, did he take advantage of it. Well over 1,300 yards rushing. Caught the ball well out of the backfield. A definite candidate for MVP in 2017, and I would say in just about any season he plays going forward. Woods, the receiver in motion right. They go play action with Gurley. Now gone. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Malcolm Jenkins. And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. The Eagles will take over here in just a second on offense. And Charles, as you look back to the Super Bowl title run that they just had, what were some of the moves that made that possible? I'll keep it on the offensive side of the ball because I thought their front office did a fantastic job of having answers in case things happen. Carson Wentz goes out, well, they had signed Nick Foles to back him up. That worked out pretty well. <laughs> Getting Alshon Jeffrey as a weapon outside to help them in the passing game. Darren Sproles gets hurt at running back. Corey Clement was signed as an undrafted free agent. He filled in well, and they traded for Jay Ajayi. And how about Jason Peters losing the all-world left tackle? And how about Vate Vitae, who they drafted the year before, filled in quite capably. They had answers for everything they needed. Zach Ertz, the man in motion. Hey, 
Wentz to throw on third and one. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Alec Ogletree in there to drop him for a loss of 10. And it'll be fourth and long. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. Here's Donnie Jones now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And he gets it away. A directional kick going toward the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Before the offense changes hands here, let's look back at the Super Bowl February 5th. What a game. I know you were there calling it offensively, though. Impressive on both sides. It certainly was, and let's face it. If you're in Minnesota, it's cold outside, but you talk about the offenses, they heated up in a big way. And how about Nick Foles? The backup quarterback turned MVP. 373 yards, three touchdowns, and, of course, the big one receiving on the Philly special. Quite a story. As you and I were talking about off-air, it was just a fluid game. Game. Not a lot of penalties, just really clean play. Exactly the type of game the NFL needed for the audiences at home watching the game and, of course, people in attendance. A really well-played game. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, because someone's going to run for some big yardage. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give them a new set of downs. They go play action here on first down. Airing it out deep for Wood. It's caught inside the 25. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. And that one results in 35 yards. Now the offense lining up first and 10. Complete. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs. Hitting on all three of those passes. And the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got that. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Fletcher Cox busting through to get him for a loss of six. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. They'll send a receiver here in motion right. Here's Goff, and he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. And this one's not close. Not even close. Short and to the right. It's no good. And this will remain a scoreless game. Everything looked good. Good snap. Good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. Throwing now is Wentz. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by Mikel Roby Coleman. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. 
I want to give a head tip real quick, Charles, to J.J. Watt before the possession switches here. Walter Payton, NFL Man of the Year. They totaled up how much he helped raise for Hurricane Relief, $37 million. Incredible. Hurricane Harvey, which really hit the Houston area in a big way, and his original goal was $200,000. So <laughs> congratulations to J.J. Watt and all the people who participated. And Greg Olson of the Panthers, Benjamin Watson of the Ravens, both tight ends, also nominated and finalists for the most prestigious award as determined by the NFL the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. 23 yards on the play. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. Second down, here's gone. Looking left side for Watkins, and he's got it. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Sammy Watkins from 13 yards out. And the Rams are in for six. It's up, it's good, and the Rams take a 7-0 lead. Kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. So the football switching hands here in just a second. And, you know, Tom Brady, just to go off on a tangent for a second, may have lost the Super Bowl, but third MVP this past season. And what he did at age 40 really something right Charles absolutely phenomenal ended up beating out Todd Gurley the running back for the Los Angeles Rams but he would have traded it for a Super Bowl win don't you think how about this the last nine NFL MVPs to play in the Super Bowl that same season oh and nine yeah he went all the way back to Kurt Warner in what 1999 where he won the double Ooh. and down he goes they bring down Wentz on the sack Aaron Donald in there to drop him for his second sack now here tonight. Wentz to throw on second down. Flush to his right. And some room to work. And able to get it here to about the 16-yard line. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. to play here in the first half. We're back to the City of Angels after this timeout. his third sack here tonight. Here's Donnie Jones now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And the Rams 
Rams are going to go ahead and take another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Here's Donnie Jones now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. They'll try and throw for it here. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he's not able to get away. He is stopped well, well short of a first down. 12 yards is the pick up there. Well, the fake spike becoming a little bit more prevalent in today's game at work there. Those old days of brother-in-law in that play, you know, where you kind of know what they're doing. They're going to, you know, spike the ball and the play's dead. And everyone just kind of relaxes. Those are gone, aren't they? Because now they're faking it and completing passes downfield. They make you look bad, and they hurt you in the yardage category, too. Brother-in-law? Yeah, you know, where you kind of do it together. Like, I, you know what I'm going to do. I know what you're going to do, and you just hang out. Can I steal that one? Yeah, you can have that one. Eluding the pressure right. And time finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football, and he's taken down. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique, except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. Here's Goff now on second down. Stripping left side, he's got it complete. And he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Eagles. And he's going to return it to the 21-yard line. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. they're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you... And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked off near the 26. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. And a big hit there as he runs into a brick wall right near the 27. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. up there 26 yards and now we won't see a play on first down we're going to get a timeout instead as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half and here we go on first and goal possible run anticipation here is the d-line sandwiches together They'll try and push it in with Gurley. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. Todd Gurley in the final seconds of the first half. And the Rams add on to their lead. That's a lead that excites a team as they head into the half. Good way to finish things off. Yeah, able to extend that lead, and you always say it, that can totally change the complexion of half number two. Yeah, it changes your morale, changes your outlook, but even before that, let's see if they decide to kind of squib kick or what they're going to do on the kickoff, because you don't want to give up a big play right before the half ends. Good point. Zerline out now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. <laughs> so we've hit intermission. It's halftime. This is the NFL, and it's a presentation of EA Sports.
So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team. That Their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Goff now looks to throw. Open man right side is cut complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Goff on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Brandon Graham. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. And they'll send the tight end in motion left. Goff now looking to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. He was looking for Watkins that time, and it's third down. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time, make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. They'll send the tight end in motion left. Back to throw. Golf. He's going to look deep. And that's caught at the 25. They give him a gain of 38. Usually hitting a deep post pattern, as we just saw there for a big gainer, that's tough to do because you usually have a safety or two in the middle of the field. But if you hit enough crossers and underneath routes and curls, start to get those guys creeping up, wanting to make plays on the football. It's the equivalent of a change-up in baseball. You show your other stuff, throw the change-up, and on that ball, it worked for big yardage. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Now a handoff here to his running back. And they'll get him down here at about the five-yard line. Only a yard that time, second and goal. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And yeah, now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? They come out with one back and three tight ends. And the back goes into motion. To throw on second down is gone. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. Todd Gurley. He scored on the ground and through the air. And the Rams add on to their lead. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. 